Okay, welcome everybody and thanks for joining our combined teaching and learning and UX call um, for today, March 15th. Um, we've got a couple of great topics on the agenda today. We're going to be seeing a demo from our friends at EDF. They've got a, um, a Microsoft admin tool UI to show us. Um, it's part of a lot of their work around integrating um, Microsoft with Sakai for um, supportive groups and, and things like that. So that should be really interesting. And then we're also going to be talking about um, bulk operations um, when you're importing lots of tests and quizzes or assignments, anything that needs to be kind of managed in bulk at the beginning of a semester. Um, we're looking at ways to improve the efficiency of that. So Christina is going to take us through a little bit of the discussion around that um, topic. So I, I figured we'd do that because it has the um, potential to run long. <laughs> so we'll do our demo first. Um, to make sure that we get that in with plenty of time. And then we'll shift over to the bulk operations discussion. Um, so um, first, uh, we'll start off with just a quick announcement. Um, SakaiCon 2023 is going to be July 18th and 19th this summer. Um, it's going to be mostly online, so the majority of the sessions will be available for people to join remotely if they can't attend um, at the University of Michigan. Um, but there will be some items that are only available for folks. Um, so we might have a few sessions that happen there on location um, won't be uh, streamed per se. So um, if you're interested in traveling to see some of your other Sakai community members, um, this is a great opportunity to do it and the weather should be nice <laughs> in July. So um, anyway, so more details on that coming soon. Um, we're, we're still kind of ironing out the program, um, but we'll uh, definitely keep everyone updated as soon as we have more information on that. Um, does anybody have any other announcements or things they want to share at this point? Okay, we'll go ahead and move into our agenda. So we'll, we'll start off first, like I mentioned, with the... Um, demo from um, from EDF. So Miguel, would you like me to give you screen share? I see Miguel in the list, but I don't hear him. So you guys can hear me, right? Uh, yeah, I, I can hear you, but Miguel, I think, is have some kind of uh, problem with the with the sound. Uh, ah, okay. It's, it's restarting the, the, the system. Just one moment, please. Okay. Yeah, I heard... Oh, I heard you for a second. Wait. One away. You hear me now? Yes. Clear? Yep. Okay, I'm going to make you presenter, Miguel. Okay. Unless Thank somebody you. else is presenting. It's you, right? I have like four sets of headphones. <laughs> in my, in my... <laughs> <laughs> you know, some of them via Bluetooth. So sometimes I'm not sure <laughs> what headset I'm using. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen. I can share my full screen. Hey, do you see my screen now? Yes. Oh, thanks. OK, so we're going to deliver some. We're going to show some of the demos of the recent contributions. 
Um, it's gonna be only three contributions, but one of one of one of them is is gonna be is gonna take more time, which is the Microsoft tool. Uh, <clears throat> again, I I wanna stop um, and say thanks to the institutions that 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 are funding this project, the European Union, the the Spanish government, um, UPB, um, Navarra, Lleida, and Murcia. So it's a group of four universities and the, the European Union and the Spanish government. So if anyone is interested on playing around with the features, everyone is welcome because we have our own dedicated QA server, which is based in on is based on Sakai 22 with all the set of, of features that belongs to this project. So right now the the first thing Oh, the, the the first feature I wanna I wanna show is a new is a new feature which is gonna be a a, a roster game, and the main objective of of the roster game is going to be instructors practicing with the student's name to guess what's the correct student name associated to the photo, so instructors can practice with the names and can know better the students. So. The Spanish name for the game was the card game, and we we don't we don't like the name, so we're looking for feedback about a, a new a new name for the game, <laughs> because maybe the card game doesn't reflect what the what the game does. And there are some nice there are some nice screenshots and prototypes and designs in the tickets. So you can see how it's gonna look like, but basically instructors can play the game. They will be invited to to guess the student name based on the photo, and it's gonna count the the correct responses and the and the wrong responses. So at the end, the game is gonna display only the students with less than fifty percent of the correct attempts. So if you have you have any question, you're interested in the game, you're interested in the progress of the game, we are in the in the prototype uh, phase. So any idea is welcome. Any idea is welcome. And even if if you want to vote the game of the name of the the name of the game, you're welcome because we have multiple candidates. And of course we're gonna have a Spanish name for the for the game. And we can have an English name for the game. Any question about this? No. So this is basically how it's gonna look like. All the designs are present in the Jira, so you can comment. But basically, in the roster, there's gonna be it's gonna be a new tab, which is the the game. Right now, the 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 name is name that the student with. Thank you, Wilma. <laughs> we adopted that initial name for the game. And basically, this plays a photo, and you can try uh, to guess the name of the student. So basically, if you are correct, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to count a correct response. And if you fail, it's going to display a wrong response. And you can re-roll the student voluntary. And there's gonna be a progress bar saying that you learned like 61% of the names. It's gonna be calculated. As I said, if you if you have more than 50% of correct responses in a student, uh, based on minimum five responses. So now I'm gonna make a demo about S2U14, which is the ability to cancel questions and score recalculation. I'm gonna make a demo. I don't know if there are if there are yeah thank you Wilma thank you Josh to propose multiple names. So the next feature is is pretty it's pretty useful pretty useful and it's a, a long requirement in Spanish institutions, which is the ability to cancel a question. So 
to conduct this demo, I'm going to create an, a new a new assessment. I'm going to import it using the markup, CNL demo. And then I'm going to use markdown, which is exactly the examples. I'm going to copy the examples. And the exam is going to be just the examples. I mean, who was the first president of the United States? The blue color, true, false, and fill in numeric. So I'm going to create the assessment. And I'm going to publish it. OK, the ampersand is escaped, no problem. So for now, I'm going to open as a student exam. I'm going to complete the exam. So the first president of the US was Washington. I don't remember, maybe A and C. It's going to be blue. It's going to be true. And it's going to be 3, 14, 15. Wait for grading. So now I'm going to log out and log in as a different student and provide another submission. So we have two submissions. Basically, I'm going to do the same exam. Then I'm going to, it's going to be Washington. Now I don't care much. It's going to be red, for example. Or even blue, why not? And it's going to be true. And it's going to be 13, 14, 15, for example. So now we have two submissions for the same exam. So imagine that, I don't know, there's there's a discussion about the exam and seems that one question is problematic or it should be reviewed. And so they got these scores and someone decides that the question is going to be invalid. So in the questions, there's the ability to cancel the question. Here. We can go to the question number two. We can cancel the question or the cancel number one. So imagine that this question, I don't know, has some concerns and someone decided to cancel it. So we can cancel the question. And it's going to prompt for two options. We can distribute the points across all the scores or we can just consider the question zero. So there are two options. Or we can abort canceling the question. So if I reduce the total points, then the question has been cancelled. So if I go to total scores, they lost the scores. So now this submission, this question has been cancelled, it's gonna be zero points because it has been cancelled. And we can also cancel another question, like the second one. So in the case of the second one, Again, we feel that this question should be cancelled. We can cancel it. So students still lose a score because the question has been cancelled. And finally, if I log in as a third student and I want to make a submission, this is a future submission since the decision was made. The first question has been cancelled, so we can see that this question has been cancelled and you can skip it. So there's no possibility to answer the question because it's cancelled. The same for the second one. You are not able to answer because it's cancelled. And then you can continue using blue, using true, and using 3.1415, for example. So going back to the instructor account, then we have three submissions and all of them have 
the same score or similar score just because two of them were canceled and, con and are considered zero points. Any question about this pizza? Do you like it? Do you think it's interesting? There's a few questions in the chat about that. Yeah. Um, will there be an undo option to restore cancel question? No, there's no undo option. Since this is in the question grader, will it also work for random draw? I'm not sure. And canceling a question does not remove it from the pool. So this is only this only affects the this only affects the submissions and the scores. I don't think I don't think it's gonna it's gonna change. So the question could be picked again. So in the case of an undo, it's by design. I mean, there's a, a there's a, um there's a text that states like by canceling the question, existing submissions will be regraded, and this action cannot be undone. So there's a clear statement about if we're canceling a question. All the submissions will be recalculated, and there's no possibility to to undo the op the um, the action. I don't know if I can assign. I mean, can I assign more points? Maybe. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, I can update the scores. So the scores are not blocked. You you can always change the score and fix it, but not revert the action. And yeah, Josh is right. I mean, the feature was created, and the criteria was 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 discussed uh, with institutions, and 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 all the absenteeism criteria was defined. So the option to undo it was it was dis discussed and they decided to to not do it because it co could also be problematic. I mean, if you decide to cancel a question and then you want to undo the action, it's also problematic. Any other question? Yeah, there's um, a little bit of chat still happening, but we can certainly file a, a JIRA to add the undo, you know, for the community version, which would be in probably in 24. So there's still time to get that in. But but as Josh mentions, the EDF timeline is super fast. So um, this would have to be something that would be added a little bit later. But I agree. I think that would be important for a lot of folks to have that. I mean, there's um, no a big, there's no, I mean, from the technology perspective, it's not a big, a big change in our model just to cancel a question. But if we implement the undo, then we need to store the previous grades first, then recalculate, and then undo is going to be restore the previous grades. Mm -hmm. But as, as I said, that, that was discussed by design. And, and they decided to put a, a, an important text saying that this action cannot be undone. And it's basically assigned zero points to that question. But the workaround right now is that instructors are able to, to grade that question anyway. So they can, but, it, but, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's true that the scores are going to be recalculated and it's going to consider zero points. That's true. But it's what they wanted since, I don't know, this is a very, very long request, maybe more than 10 years. So it finally happened. And, and about the score, there's two possibilities. Just consider the question zero, zero, 
or distribute the, the, the score across other questions. So anyway, you can play around with it. You have the QA server. You can go in, create a site, create some exams, and play around with it. You're welcome. And finally, I'm going to make Paco Presenta of the Microsoft integration tool. So he can he can share these slides. Do you have access to the slides, Paco? Yep. Wilma. Uh, let's, I'm looking for the name in the list. Is F it side. F? It's uh, F side. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Okay. I think, uh, I'm sorry. We're seeing your screen. It's showing the big blue button. Oh. Okay, perfect. So I continue with the, with the presentation. Uh, okay. So uh, Microsoft, Microsoft uh, user and group synchronization. The, the idea is uh, we are going to we want to have uh, an integration of all all the Microsoft suites in inside uh, Sakai, and the first step uh, at this point is the user and, and group synchronization. The idea is to have all the all the users in. We have in Sakai we have sites and groups, and in Microsoft we we have the teams and channels. And the idea is. Every every user in every and every site will be duplicate. Will be in the same uh, team related with this this kind of, of sites. Okay, at the at the beginning, well, we have developed um, an administration workspace uh, tool. So uh, this tool is intended to be used by administrators. Mm, at at least only uh, at at least this tool. Maybe in the future, uh, the other integrations with well, the, the Teams, the OneNote, the, or all the new the new futures yeah, will be available for for teachers. But at this moment, only for the administrators. Uh, we have, I think, I can you can see my my pointer. Uh, we have a, a first just the the credential configuration, and this will be how we see our, our tool. Uh, here you see we, got, uh, we have the relationship with, with, between each site and each team. And in, in case of teams, uh, in case of sites that have different groups, for each group, which uh, channel, Microsoft channel related with uh, in, inside a uh, Microsoft time team, all the, the the relationship uh, the relationship is 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 linked. Uh, once uh, we have uh, all the uh, all these relationships configured, we can uh, run the synchronization process. So all the users here will be moved and we will synchronize in. So the the Sakai part will be synchronized in the Microsoft part. Uh, to create all this kind of relationship, we have, of course, the, 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 new, the new tab that will allow us to uh, manage all these uh, links. So how, which sites will be linked uh, to which teams in Microsoft? And of course, if the site contains some 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 groups, 
how we want how we want to link these groups with the channels related in this theme. With with this, uh, we can fill all this 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 table. But of course, what happened? Imagine at the beginning of the course, we have a lot of um, maybe thousands of new uh, sites. So to create this time, this kind of, of relationship manually, one by one, maybe uh, will be a well a hard work. So for that, we have also prepared an auto configuration system. This consists just in two steps. In the first step, we uh, filter the sites we want to process. Uh, well, the project uh, is if it's published, if we filter if, if the site contains some kind of, of uh, property, and then the, the system will will try to match for for each uh, each site if if the system have found a uh, a team related, for example, with the same time uh, with the same name or with the same pattern. We can establish, for example, uh, the pattern of the site name with uh, year name, year number, or something like this. And finally, the the the, the configuration process tell us uh, this 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 site have found a candidate to be linked, and these others these other sites have not found any candidate. So we it will create a new a new team in this case. Of course, we have well uh, and a progress bar, and of course, with a lot of uh, sites, we this will take uh, some time. Uh, okay, with this, we have a we have the relationship between the sites and teams, and the synchronization that we say, uh, we say that we can run it manually. Also, we have prepared a job that we, we will run all the synchronizations, uh, for example, daily. Uh, but of course, what happens if, uh, well, uh, I run the synchronization, all the users here are moved or are or more are linked, are synchronized here. But after this point, for example, the, the, the teacher includes a new user in the in the in the site so for that we also prepare um a real time real time synchronization so in the config uh, tab we have set uh, the configuration about the hooks so for example if we create a new site uh, if of course this steve check is is smart uh, in the moment we we create a new site, the new team a new team will be created with the same uh, the same name, on and the relationship will be created. Also, if we add a user to a site, the user will be automatically added to the team, or and so for the groups and well, all these kind of configurations. And that's all with with uh, with this. As I said, this is the first step in, in, our, in our process. So uh, at this point, we only, only need more functionalities to the rest of the Microsoft suite to the in, in, to integration. Yep. Any questions about, well, uh, I, I didn't. Look for the chat. Yeah, I don't think we had any questions yet, but if you do have any about the Microsoft Teams integration, please feel free. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, because I'm using a different set now. Um, so this is about mapping sites with teams and groups with channels. So at the end, some Microsoft objects are going to be mapped with Sakai objects, which will allow, which will allow some new features in the future, like raising teams, raising meetings, uh, sharing 
documents. So there's more work to be done on, on the Microsoft side because this is only the user and, and site synchronization. And the next piece of work is going to be the integration of the meetings tool that is going to benefit from all of this. So right now, this piece of work is more related to system administrators to configure the Microsoft credentials if the Microsoft <coughs> services are in the university. I know Chuck said he had some questions in the chat. Chuck, you want to go ahead and ask? Yeah, thanks a lot. I uh, I built a Google Classroom integration into Sugi, and uh, I I appreciate the difficulty of what you have done, and the and the and the, and the fact that you're just kind of like uh, you're you're just wrestling with like a swimming pool. <laughs> and so, uh, con congratulations on on what you have done. So, my my first question is, where would you say the roster of because there's a synchronization? Where would you say the roster of record really lives? Does the roster of record live in Sakai, and we're carefully ensuring that a corresponding Microsoft team has all those people? Meaning, does the school add people to Sakai? the Sakai site, and there's a team that's automatically updated, or vice versa. Does the school add people to a team, and then Sakai notices those new people and then provisions them in the site? So where is the school, in effect, constructing the master roster? Yeah, the, the synchronization is always going to, to be to the right. So the from Sakai to Microsoft, um, okay. the all of the premise is um, at the beginning, all the users in the in the Sakai in Sakai need to be in the active directory. Microsoft. Also, we have a prepare for all the users that have no uh, Microsoft account. And so all the users in Sakai that don't have a Microsoft account, uh, these, users, these users will be invited as guest users. So also, we also support this kind of, of users. So then do, do these schools, in a sense, use their Microsoft accounts as their SSO for Sakai and other things on the campus? Not yet, not so yet, because Microsoft was introduced recently in the past, I don't know, two or three years. So many institutions have all the roster set, the sites, the groups, the users, and at the end they introduced Microsoft in the organization. So the first thing they did was migrate the email from email services and email servers, etc., to Microsoft. Now they introduced Office 365, they introduced Teams, and they, they saw that many, many, many students and instructors use a lot of Microsoft objects. So they, they work a lot outside Sakai. So basically what it's going to do is going to provide to Microsoft the same structure. So instructors and students have the same structure in Microsoft and they don't need to create teams and they don't need to create groups by themselves. Of course they can do, of course they can create groups right? they, and they can deal with the, with the group members and they can create private channels and private teams. But Sakai is going to provide that and it's gonna help a lot because right now, many, many, many structures create the sites and the groups. So if I were hired at uh, Valencia, and I got my, I'm like, hey, welcome, new employee. I would get an account like Dr. Chuck at uh, upv.es or yes. .es. And, then that, and then I would like, they would say, here's where you click to go check your email. And then I would. And then I would be on a Microsoft site checking my email, which means that these Dr. Chuck at 
upv.ed.es would be a Microsoft account, like instantly. That it would be a Microsoft account, mm -hmm. and and all my students who have been enrolled would do the same. They would immediately go check their email, and then they have a Microsoft account, and. And so then when they log into Sakai for the first time, they're talking to some SSO at yes. UPV. But yes. when they come into Sakai, you know that I'm Dr. Chuck at upv.ed.es. So you, mm -hmm. you don't know that's a Microsoft account, but it is, right? It just, the SSO doesn't need to be Microsoft for SSO, but it is the same email. And so ultimately, you just are going like, hey, we, Dr. Chuck just made his first class teaching, and he wants to use Microsoft stuff from his Sakai. And yeah. so your software says, hey, hey, Microsoft, um, is this Dr. Chuck at UPV good? Yeah. Okay, well, let's start making groups for this guy automatically, right? Yep. And the fact the SSO is really almost irrelevant because the email – is already the email address, the string of the email address is enough. And you can ask Microsoft, does this email address part of UPV's Microsoft world? And they go, yeah. And then you just start doing stuff, right? Correct. Yeah. OK. So at the end, if you go to the Microsoft services directly, like teams.microsoft.com, and you log in with your UPV account, you will find your sites, your groups, your channels. So you don't need to do anything. And so you just, go, yeah, okay. Yeah, they'll have been made. And they'll be like, oh, that's really nice. And I can use these any way I feel like using them. Correct. So you can learn inside Sakai and outside Sakai. Because right now this is happening. It's happening because many instructors learn outside Sakai. But Sakai provides, you know, role acts as a facilitator to provide to the Microsoft the same structure. So if we start providing to Sakai objects like teams or groups, you can go through Sakai or you can go through Microsoft and it's going to be the same. So it's going to help users. And I think it's good for Sakai because many institutions are using Microsoft. So let me then, let me then pose a, a, a question. Um, and that is, given the APIs that you're calling inside of Teams and the experience that you are gaining inside of Teams, how hard, you know, just, just give me like one month, three months, six months, two years, how hard would it be if you had a school come to you and said that somehow what we want is a Sakai that listens to Microsoft for the master roster. Now, I, I, I'm not saying that this is just an if statement in the code you're writing. I'm just saying, I'm more asking about the APIs that you're using. If somehow someone came into Sakai and say, hey, I want you to make me a Sakai site that corresponds with this team. Would those APIs that you're already talking to support that? If there was some way of communicating what team we're starting with, does that make sense? Yeah, I think our first analysis was to create something bi-direct, bidirectional. Am I right, Paco? Yep. Our our, five, our first proposal was to to be bidirectional, so we can synchronize from Sakai to Microsoft, but also from Microsoft to Sakai. But uh, we finally discarded this in the in our final analysis because well all the universities told told us that this functionality was not really helpful helpful right for them because of the way they see microsoft they see microsoft as sort of like a a subcontractor and sakai is another subcontractor their enterprise is not microsoft you know their enterprise is not microsoft their enterprise is their enterprise and they happen to be pushing my dr chuck at upv into Sakai, they're pushing that into, into um, and they don't feel like pushing their Oscars into teams. What I'm thinking, what where I'm thinking about is, imagine when, like Google Classroom, Teams becomes the campus LMS, right? And so then 
then in you know two years, five years, six years from now, uh, you meet a school and they just said, oh wow, we use Microsoft 365 for you know our word processing and our email and we're just going to use Teams as our LMS and then their enterprise rosters get pushed into Teams. Um, and this is more for new customers, right? Um, and I'm also thinking it's more for um, less sophisticated customers, right? You know, school, uh, lower <laughs> level schools that don't have developers that are just like, oh, Microsoft is the answer. And then somebody builds a student information system that pushes rosters up to using the exact technique you're using. That's SIS pushes rosters into teams. Mm -hmm. And and so and I guess my only question was mostly about the APIs that you're calling, you feel like you could have done bidirectional if you felt like it. Right. If you if you wanted to and someone wanted you to do that, it's not like these APIs are so messed up that they can only do one direction. You could do bidirectional if you felt, if you felt like it and someone paid you to do it. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think so. Yeah. And also, uh, well, of course, we always can uh, call the Microsoft services to ask for all the information periodically. But also, I've read something about the push notifications. So maybe it's possible to configure the, our uh, Microsoft uh, Active Directory. Yeah. tell us when something okay. has changed right yeah and so i'll just say that you know microsoft is active inside the lti working group um uh microsoft has actually been an active lti working group for a long time and they um have never they, they, they're smart people they have a lot of good ideas they do a lot of experimental stuff but then they never kind of finished it Right. They never deploy it. They never make a product. They and and so I'm I'm just imagining maybe a way for Microsoft to um, to show Microsoft what we're doing, uh, what you're doing. And um, and they're like, wow, that's really neat. Uh, how about if we ran the show? How about how 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 upset would you be in Sakai if Microsoft started to do things and then would bring customers to us? Right rather than you know the customer that we already have likes microsoft <clears throat> but instead microsoft has the customer first and they've they've convinced them to put all the rosters into um to microsoft and then and so the point is it's just not technically all that daunting and all the experience that you're getting at this point prepares us if that eventuality happens i mean yeah. it'd be work and money et cetera, et cetera. but it's not like this is a waste of, this is not a complete waste of time at that point no no it's not Good. i mean at the end at the end we 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 had a meeting we thought the microsoft i want to say microsoft responsibles in the institutions i mean they they work for the institutions but they are the the, the most advanced users in the institutions so microsoft came 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 after Sakai. I mean, Sakai is, is there for a long time and they have all the structure in Sakai. So that's the reason why they decided, not me, because they pay, they pay us to do it. They decided to do it in that direction. They right. decided that Sakai is going to be the master because they feed Sakai and now Sakai is going to feed Microsoft. So at the end, everything needs to happen in Sakai. But you're right that there could be the opposite, an institution that the first thing they have is Microsoft. And they want the software that integrates well with the Microsoft objects. So it's the inverse. Am I right? Yep. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Miguel and Paco. That was a great demo. And that's some really exciting work happening, especially if you're a Microsoft school, that should be uh, good news for your admins <laughs> to facilitate those team creations a lot more um, easily across the institution. So that's very cool. And we did run over um, a good bit. We've got uh, just about 13 minutes left. I don't know, Christina, do you think that's enough time 
to um, to talk about the bulk operations, or do you want to save that for an upcoming meeting? It's up to you. We could either start it now and continue, or we could wait and um, save it for next time. I have no problem just doing a quick start um, and continuing it next time if there's any interest in uh, discussing anything. Okay, sounds good. Um, would you like screen share to show some of those JIRAs that you mentioned? Sure. You are a presenter. All right. All right, so um, I'm gonna go back to the history and refer to some of the uh, history jeers I've got there. But a few years ago, I worked with um, Longsight to develop the import assignments published options. So when you go to site info, import from site, choose to either merge or replace your data. When you check the tools, there is an options link next to assignments, and that brings up a checkbox to import published. If you check that box, your assignments are will come over published. If they were sent to the gradebook, the gradebook items are created. The assignments are ready for the students to be able to submit them. Um, we had hoped initially to be able to do the same thing for all of the other tools that come over as drafts. But after having the assignments for a while, we're seeing um, A, that it can break frequently when there's changes made to the assignments tool um, that don't test the import with it. And two, it's not useful for everyone because we always, we copy our classes each semester from a master template. A lot of other schools will copy from a previous semester. So before they can publish those options and have them ready for students, they need to change the dates. So they go to date manager, they update the dates for the next semester, and then they have to publish them, which right now involves going to every single assignment, click edit, click post, next assignment, edit post, touching every assignment, touching every test, forums and announcements can come over draft or published. That depends on a system-wide property you can set. But generally, it just means that there's a lot of it. The instructor has to touch a lot of individual things to have them ready to go. So what I had what we had kind of brainstormed at uh, Sakai Camp last month was instead having a bulk publish option on each of the tools um, that have the draft status. So where assignments has the checkbox to remove the assignment, the checkbox would instead be to select the assignment and then have a button to remove selected Publish selected, unpublish selected. And just be able to then do all of your assignments at once, do all of your tests at once, or half your tests at once if you have a set of them that you want to publish. But just trying to find a way to make the process of setting up a new class copying content from a previous one, a little less manual effort for the instructors. And I noticed that Jira also mentions having it in the date manager as well. So that would be across tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was an option, too, that they had discussed, either having it be on each tool or within Date Manager, or both. I'd now, like why... to see it in both myself, <laughs> but, um, but that's there my There was opinion. a slightly older JIRA um, that was created by 
Dave Eveland about having the date manager have a publish option. And there was some discussion about how the error checking would work for that, given that it has to check for things like grade book with the same name and everything else. So whether that would be easily workable or not. So. Does anybody have any thoughts on any of those items? Feel free to speak or type it into the chat. Also, um, Christina was kind enough to paste in all those uh, JIRAs in the, the um, Etherpad. So if you want to go to any of them directly to um, review the existing comments or add comments of your own, please do. Um, if you can think of any edge cases or um, you know, additional requirements that might need to be considered, um, we want to make sure to capture those in JIRA. Yeah. The ones I have listed under history, are all older, like Sakai 1219 era. So we're hoping to uh, update, you know, based on how everyone else is using the tools and the content, how they're reusing content. Because while well, making something that works, you know, for me and my faculty would be great, but it would be even better if we could make something that's going to work for her you know, most instructors and most um, schools. Yeah, and I think taking it out of the import workflow was kind of a key um, piece of this because, um, like you said, it tends to break because not everybody thinks to test import after, you know, changes are made. And mm -hmm. also, you know, people might want to use it that aren't importing at that moment. You know, they might want to update five you know, things to publish them, but they're not exactly, you know, importing from a previous term at that moment. So, it, you know, the import wouldn't help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just if it was part of date manager, it would also need to allow them to publish the options without necessarily updating the dates in case they do publish from a template that has the dates already changed or um, let's say I've got an instructor who's teaching five you know three sections of composition one online and just wants the same dates for all of them she sets everything up in section one copies it to the next site the dates are already there just needs the ability to get everything published It looks like there's general agreement in the chat that this is a good idea. Um, so I think it will be a popular enhancement <laughs> once it happens. Well, hopefully we can uh, come up with the best way to do that and have uh, one of the developers able to hammer that out for us. All right, well, thank you, Christina. I appreciate you walking us through that and um, giving us the JIRAs to uh, go to for more information. So again, if, if people want to comment on them or if you think of something else related to um, this whole process, please do go to JIRA and, and add a comment. And if you know of any other related JIRAs, um, please throw them in too, because the ones I have are most you know, the ones I know off the top of my head are the ones I created because I've been championing, championing, <laughs> uh, trying to smooth out that import process to make it so there's a lot less individual, individual touches on items uh, for a while. So trying just to 
make that process more streamlined and more effective so the instructors don't have nearly as much to do. All right. Uh, any other comments? I see Adrian typing. <laughs> Christina, queen of the gnarly workflow. <laughs> I think that's your official title, isn't it? <laughs> I'll, I'll claim it if it's all on all. <laughs> I, I sure. believe that some of these gnarly workflows really need to have a machete taken through to them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get a badge for that. Um, all right. Well, great. So it doesn't look like there's too many questions. You guys are a quiet group today. Um, but I do thank you for attending and thank you again, um, Miguel and um, Paco for showing us what the uh, EDF folks have been up to. It's all ex extremely exciting work. And, um, and thank you again, Christina, for um, recapping the whole bulk operation um, conversation for us. And hopefully we can get that, um, get a little movement behind that JIRA to, to implement that change. So thank you, everybody. And I will see you um, in April. Our next meeting is April 5th, I believe. Let me just check my calendar real quick. Yes. Our next uh, call will be um, April 5th at 11 a.m. So hopefully you will join us then. And I, I think if, if we are confirmed, I think the EDF folks had arranged for um, a PASAM demo. It's, it's a new... Uh, grading process that they're incorporating. It's a separate tool. Um, so hopefully that will happen on the 5th, but I'll, I'll, I'll put an announcement out once we confirm that. So, um, all right. Have a great week, everybody.